This is Twit. So let's get into the FLIR one. Yeah, the, the so, so here it is. This is the little module that uh, they left behind for us to play with. And uh, they have a version of this for Android. They have a version of this for iOS. But I had their engineers in the studio, and I had a chance to speak with uh, Rebecca Potter, mm -hmm. who is a project manager at FLIR, and I asked her about the Lepton camera. Rebecca, tell me a little bit about Lepton. So the Lepton camera is a camera that FLIR developed a few years ago. We wanted to miniaturize IR cameras, similar to how CMOS has miniaturized uh, visible cameras for cell phones. So we've made two products. We um, brought the price point down on our consumer model to 199, and then we've upgraded our resolution um, to produce a, a better picture with our pro model. It's also a little bit more rugged. Um, both products have another feature that was um, something our users gave us feedback about, which is an adjustable connector. We call it the one fit connector so that if your phone is in a case, you can use the camera or if you have a bare phone, you can use the camera and it adjusts to both of those. Once I've got a FLIR 1 or a FLIR 1 Pro, what, what does it enable me to see? Well, we're, we're seeing both thermal energy and visible uh, information in our blended MSX image. So you can see the words on the screen that I'm pointing at. That would also be useful if you were looking at a fuse box. You could read the labels. Um, what we've also done is integrated with the uh, wearables. Um, so I've got an <laughs> I, I watch right here. And that's useful if I want to hold up the camera and look at something. I can see it on my, uh, on my iWatch. I can take the picture and I can review it right here on the wearable. So we think that's a useful um, uh, tool for folks who are maybe crawling around in an attic or trying to get behind a sink, something like that. Yeah. Rebecca, this is always technology that I love to see. It's, it's technology that I love to play with because it allows me to do things like, for example, take images of my home and find out where heat is leaking or go into my data closet and find out if something is running hot. Uh, it, the, the really, the the possibilities are only limited by your imagination. We have seen a lot of use cases. FLIR has high-end customers in search and rescue and military. And on the lower end, we're seeing people use it for all sorts of um, on-the-job tasks, uh, HVAC inspection, electrical, plumbing. Um, so we're really excited about the new markets that we're opening up to. Now, all right. You know, one of the things I like about this is the fact that uh, they have accounted for the fact that people put their phones in cases. It's this fancy new thing. And anytime I've had a dongle yeah. that, that tries to plug in, it's I typically worst. have to take the case off. Which, yeah, and nobody oh. wants to do that. You bought the case to protect your phone. You don't want to have to, yeah. But what they've done with this is this little screw right here. It's so smart. This raises and lowers the connector so that, uh, you know, even if you've got a suit, like this one uh -huh. will fit on an otter box, which is basically putting a tank around your phone. And then you can go all the way down to this. There's, there's actually some of the shallow profile phones so that this part will always butt up against the bottom nice. of either the phone or the case. Brilliant design. Actually, I think everyone should be doing that. And this is something that works with both iOS and Android, right? Right, right. So they have different versions. There's, there's the Lightning version for uh, mm -hmm. iOS. There's the USB-C version for Android. I will say this, and I know you're going to like this because you're an iOS fan. <laughs> The iOS version does work better. Really? It does. It, it's it's not the not the hardware or anything. It's just that when you're developing for iOS, it's one phone. It's, yeah. it's a camera yeah. that yeah. you know that how, yeah. how to inter interface with it. That's a given. Yeah. On certain phones, like on the Pixel, this works beautifully. Yeah. On my 3T, the frame rate actually drops down. So Ooh. there's some communications issues. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But but yeah, that, that's a thing. Now the way that works is there's if you can see this, Alex, there's actually two cameras here. So I've got a regular camera. And then down here, I've got Lepton. This has its own battery, and then it allows me to composite the image to show detail that I wouldn't previously be able to see. Let's, let's take a look at some of the, the things that we've shot. Uh, for example, this, this strapping, strapping man right here. Uh, this is our <laughs> cameraman. Uh, and what this allows you to do is you can go back after the fact and scrub between the thermal I love and it. the composite. Now, the, the cool thing about this is it gives you all the detail that a standard thermal camera wouldn't do. Like, for example, a, a standard thermal camera wouldn't yeah. show you, like down in the bottom here, you wouldn't be able to see the text because that this would all just be hot. It would yeah. all just be a blob of heat. So it's, it's actually more detailed than what far you might Far more detailed, far more detailed. Amazing. And then I can go, like, for example... Uh, uh, is that Jason? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't realize this, but infrared really shows off wrinkles. It really does. Look at that. That's, that, that's not so great. Oh, uh, here's, something, here's something that's cool. So we went back into our power vault. Uh, yep. where all the power runs through, and you can clearly tell where the heat is. Now, the funny thing is these don't feel hot to the touch. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. we don't register heat. We register 
differences in heat. This will actually show like wh where the what heat is concentrated. Basically. Precisely. And remember, this this is not near IR. Near IR is all reflected IR. Yeah. This is emitted IR. That's heat that's actually coming from from those parts. Now this one's interesting. Can you tell which one of these circuit boxes is attached to the rest of the office? And which one is attached to the studio? Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, it's 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 this sort of stuff. It's like, okay, well, obviously the one on the left has yeah. far more current running through it, and, and that's the one that's that's connected to uh, to our uh, uh, to our studio setup here. This is the transformer. So all the power in the building comes through this, uh, which which is kind of interesting because there's a heat bloom that I didn't expect to see. Uh, and uh, can you tell where the air conditioning vent is? <laughs> yeah, that is awesome. Uh, and now here, where, oh yeah, actually this is this is something else I kind of liked. Yeah, what is this? This is the main. So this feeds the building. Ah. And I, it does not feel hot. In fact, it mm -hmm. feels cold. Mm -hmm. But in this image, there's a lot of IR being em emitted from uh, from from that conduit. And it's this is one of these things again where it it just kind of changes the way that you look at the world around you. I use this all the time now. I have a previous version of this. Yeah. Whenever I'm going into a data center, because it allows me to see if equipment has been located in the wrong place. I want all my hot items near the top, because yeah. I don't want that heat to be coming up through everything else yeah. in the rack. This, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's not just a toy. This is a valuable tool to well, have. Well, I can box. see that. You know, if, if you're doing some plumbing, or you know, you're about to like, you know, bust a hole in, in some drywall or something, you want to know what's on the other side. You want to know, you know, what you can and can't touch. What's too hot and what isn't, uh, or hot enough. Or if you're having overheating problems at home or even in a car, I feel like this could be really, really useful. Uh, to, like you said, to kind of find where those hotspots are, right? You know how they always tell you that you're not supposed to daisy chain, uh, uh, what do they call it, <laughs> extension cords yeah, and, and power yeah, strips? Yeah. Um, I can actually show that. I, I did a setup at home. I just plugged a bunch of stuff in. That's awesome. And you could see the power strips got hotter and yeah, hotter and hotter yeah. as I got closer to the source yeah. because that one had all the current rushing through it. And it's sort of like, yeah, this, this, the, all the stuff that you were told as a kid actually does happen. Well, okay, so I can see the, the, the practicality here if you're a plumber, if you're you know, a maker, mm -hmm. if you're a mechanic, if you're working in server rooms, whatever, right? But there are those existing thermal cameras that you mentioned that don't necessarily offer some of the detail that we're talking about That's here. True. Where, where is it, how does this compare price-wise? Uh, this is, so this starts at 200. Uh, they, they dropped the price. I mean, it used to start at 400. And the, yeah. the pro version of this is $400 if you want to get a bit better resolution. Uh, and is it saving all your stuff in the cloud or what? No, it's, it's, on, it's on the device. It's all on the device. It's on all the device, device. Which, you, which mine does sync to the cloud. So yeah. all of this stuff yeah. is now in my, uh, my Google Photos folder. But, um, you know, again, it's, it's at a good price point. Mm -hmm. uh, $200 is just about right for someone to start playing with it. And just take this and run it through your house because I can't tell you all the places where you're gonna find it useful. You're gonna find that out. You're gonna go, oh wow, this is really good for me to figure out when my cooking is done. Because this does give you, there, there's, a, there's actually a thermal reader on this will tell you exactly how hot something is. Yeah. Um, you can, you can like, find leaks in your wall. Oh, uh, found one yesterday. I was able to find pests because I went outside into the garden, and in San Francisco it's nice and cool, and I pulled this out, and I saw all these little moving heat blobs. I'm like, oh my goodness, those, those are like rodents. Yeah, <laughs> that's and you, amazing. You can't hide from me. Yeah. I can see yeah. you through the yeah. soil. I mean, yeah, if they're collected there, that's where, that would be a heat source. Yeah, I saw, so I'm like, oh look, that, there's a little nest. Yay. That's amazing stuff, it's amazing stuff. Well, thanks so much for showing that off with us. Um, uh, really fascinating, that's the FLIR 1 thermal camera, mm -hmm. right? FLIR 1 and the FLIR 1 Pro. Uh, 199 and 399 depending on how much uh, resolution you you want uh, they have both Android and iOS versions like I said the iOS version does work a little bit better mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. at least on my setup however if you've got something like a pixel uh, the Android version is perfect yeah great great